So we'll go back to our blog at wordpress.com. This time we're going to log in. We created an account last week. If you don't remember your login, that's okay. Just take notes. We don't have time to try to retrieve your password and such. But you want to log in. want to log in and then what you'll see as I said previously uh, wordpress.com lets you um, read other people's blogs and have your own blog so when you log in at the top left you'll see my sites you might have more you can have more than one So I've visited my site, and then on the left we have uh, to publish content. So uh, I'll show you some, some concrete examples from the PDF. Uh, if you see on the left side uh, blog posts, I'm going to click add. And so here's some of these things from the PDF title. What would you title your blog post? As I talked about here, you're going to write you're going to write something that is related to your uh, your topics and this is the one that is going to be the human readable one. So this is the one that's okay to use the stop words. Let's say I'm doing recipe of the month. Pecan pie. I've developed my series of posts. This is my recipe of the month. This month, pecan pie. That's a good. That's a good title. But in my case, a better one is I'm uh, what you would call burying the lead. The lead idea is pecan pie. So that's a little more important. Pecan pie. A little less important is that it is my recipe of the month series. People might not care about that. People might care more about pecan pie. So actually, I'm going to make this backwards. I'm going to say pecan pie recipe of the month. I still have the keywords, but this will appear first. This will be found first. This will show first pecan pie. When you type that, this is the human readable one. Next to it, you should see a little chain. Click on that, and then you'll see this is the name of your site. That's the address. Pecan pie recipe of the month. Oh, it's got my stop words. It's not been crafted exactly how, how I want. So I can simply change this. You can click, oops, you can click pecan pie recipe. So on yours, you can uh, craft your posts like that, pecan pie recipe in the address. Um, that'll be seen by the search engines, it'll be indexed. When someone searches these keywords, it could show up. Then we've got the longer one for the people to read. Pecan pie, recipe of the month. Is it necessary to be all under um, lowercase in the, in the link? That's common practice, so yes, it should be lowercase, no spaces. And if you need to delineate words, 
the <coughs> common practice is dashes, not underscores. It's just on a technical level that the search engines can understand this format better. Uh, if, we, if we used regular spaces, the search engine might not understand that and it would be a broken link. And, uh, or sometimes what happens if we use spaces, what, what the website does is it puts in percent twenty. That confuses the search engines. So no spaces. Underscores don't seem to work very well either. So dashes. I normally would use underscores most of the time, but I know for addresses, it's better to use dashes. And to set just, that, just one moment. Yes. Did it generate that for you, or did you do it like that? Yeah, that that it did do it for me. I typed, I typed in my regular title here, and it added it for me. And sometimes it doesn't do it that accurately, unfortunately. So you always have a way. You should have a way to click to edit it yourself. I did then go in and take out the of the month part. I just wrote pecan pies. Well, I'll just uh, that kind of was on that question. Uh, uh, once you change it, how do you set it? You should see a little, a little uh, chain there on the left. Edit post URL next to the title that you wrote here. If you click next to it, it should oh. pop up. And then to edit it, it's not that obvious, but to edit it, click on it, and then it lets you edit it. You can't edit this stuff. That's exactly. great. Same as the permanent. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mine just said permanent. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. sometimes it's different. No, I, I found it, but when you change it, when you modify that, uh, to, do you have to return to accept it, or how does it? Yeah, I would, press, I would press return. I would press enter, and then it would change okay. it. So some of you might see it like this. Some of you might see it that it says permalink. Uh, two different ways that it calls it. So um, that's our, our permalink, our address, and uh, that is something to craft. Yes? One thing I saw is if you're in the dashboard doing the post, there's two ways to post a new, new, new post, right? It, there is, yeah. It doesn't really give you the same option at the same area. I think it gives you in different areas. Look for a spot that says permalink. Okay. But yeah, there's different ways. This is the thing about WordPress that there's different ways to do the same thing. But the idea is that you should uh, craft these. Don't let it do automatically because you might not get the best result. <clears throat> uh, usually, when I write blog posts, I have the, the general title in mind, which can change. And then what I want to do early on, before I write anything here, is think about categories and tags. You see Right now, mine is currently set to uncategorized categories, and I've already used this blog before, so I have categories built in. You probably have not. If you're brand new to this, you only have uncategorized. You don't want to use the uncategorized category. Remember, categories are the large organizational units of blog posts. I'm going to be writing this pecan pie recipe of the month. So I could think of several ways to categorize this. Pecan pie. Although that might be very specific. I could use the category pecan. Then I could fit in pecan cookies, pecan pie. Although maybe my idea is recipe of the month. Maybe that's my category. Because in the recipe of the month I could do pecan pie, I could do chocolate chip cookies, I could do um, almond florentines, etc. So here basically if you've got uncategorized, that's the mark of a beginner, the mark of an amateur, the mark of someone that doesn't know what they're doing with SEO. So you should see a way to be able to add a new category. You see a little plus symbol, add new category. Yes. Okay, I, I'm doing the same. I'm adding the blog, so I'm actually my blog is um, blog. I'm talking about this class, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if I talk about classes, the category would be classes, and would would the tags be like your blog class, your SEO class? If I wanted to write comments about my things I've done there, is that how you would organize it? That could work. Um, 
What about... It's going to take like four classes. What about, yeah, the, um, the subject of the class could be the category. That's what I was thinking. Blog class, system. Blog class, WordPress class, etc. And then within the post, well, we talked about different things regarding blogging. Keywords, mm -hmm. tags, etc. And those could be the tags. So there's no wrong way to do this. Whatever makes sense for you, I think about it in terms of those. The categories are the large organizational units, and then the tags are the small details. Uh, so, if I have a category of pecan, anything related to pecans would show up there okay. when someone searches. So, I had already created a recipe of the month category, but if I didn't have one, I would type it and then add it. And then this post would be under that category. And how many did I say I would recommend for categories? One to three. So in this case, I put it into the category recipe of the month. Usually, I can categorize these posts before I start to write. I have an idea of what I'm going to write about. I have an idea of how to categorize them. Usually, I don't write tags at this point, because tags often, for me at least, appear organically as I write. As I write my paragraph or two, then I see keywords that stand out that I could then add to tags here. And the point of using tags is that everything that is tagged with the same tag then is linked together in my WordPress site. So if someone then views, if someone then clicks on the tag chocolate on my site, it'll show all blog posts that mentioned chocolate. This is how you can get people to read more on a particular topic. The same thing will happen with categories. But again, categories are the big ideas, and tags are the smaller details. So I'm not going to add any tags at the moment. They're usually, for me, they, they appear before me as I, as I write. I might uh, recommend for you some that you've already written, but um, as you as you blog more, WordPress keeps track of this, and it might suggest use this tag, use that tag. Um, one of the items that I mentioned, okay, under writing, we've got title, uh, description. So we'd like to display a little bit of text when we get found to entice people to read. In my case, mine is, uh, mine is over here. Uh, if you scroll down on the left, featured image, sharing, etc., more options. If you click on more options, excerpt. Excerpt is um, this 150 character or so description that you can add to your posts so that when they show up on a search result, you have that amount of text. If you don't write anything here, the search engine will attempt to grab the first bit of text it sees from your page. And it may be hilariously wrong. It may grab, for example, links. That have no relevance. It may take those links that you wrote up on the top of your page and put them as your results, and then it doesn't make sense why it's listed there. So instead of letting the search engines scavenge for some text to put on the result, you can craft an excerpt. 150 characters. There's no, unfortunately, there's no counter here to tell you how much you've written. Um, but what you could do is uh, this is supposed to 
to tell you how many words you've written somewhere. Obviously, I'm skipping because I talked about it. Frequency, length, uh, images. You can insert images on the blog post. In this case, you've got add media. Remember, we were looking also at a different type of interface previously last week. Um, I'm showing it this way because this is one way to add posts quickly. The other way is when you're on this screen here, you also have the WP. You don't have to do this, but on the WP admin, uh, that's another way to manage your site. Uh, if you have the link of WP admin, some of you don't. But then that takes you to the dashboard, which gives you very similar things, except that what we were looking at right here, as I said previously, this is the training wheels. And you may be saying, I don't see the same thing. And that's, that's fine. Two ways to do the same thing. But when you're on the dashboard, um, posts, add, new, you might see an interface that looks more like this. So I wrote here, um, pecan pie recipe. And in this interface, you're going to see here, permalink. And that's where you're editing. And then your, your editor and such. And on this version of the interface, you would see excerpt, categories, tags. So different interface, same concept. Yes? Can you go back up to where it showed you the formula? See how it says uh, dash 2? Mm-hmm. What exactly is that dash to? There's already some link somewhere on your site that already has pecan pie recipe. So it automatically creates a number two to not conflict with your first one. Oh, so that, and you can't get rid of that either. Why is that showing up? I can't make it go away. So that doesn't affect your SEO at all. No, no, because the main idea is of the article and of the URL are there. Okay. That extra is just a little extra. Now, that, that happens uh, sometimes because I, I think this is one aspect in the internal sense. Uh, WordPress, this is confusing. I may have called a product pecan pie, and then if I try to make a blog post called pecan pie, it might say, you've already got something called pecan pie, so it adds a number two to it. And I can't change this one to a number one or delete the number two unless I delete the other one or change it. I don't know if they fixed this, but I know I've seen this where completely different related, unrelated things were both using the same name and therefore one of them had to be a number two. I had to delete the other one to free that name up to change this one to just peek on pie recipe. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. So from the dashboard point of view, I'm not seeing the expert excerpt. Mm -hmm. Is it because I have the Yoast SEO installed? Possibly. So if you've got Yoast, it it should have a screen there for you to fill that in. Yeah. Use that one. Okay. Two ways to accomplish the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> I've got the basic WordPress, and so I have excerpt. If you've got your own self-hosted and you've got Yoast, they'll have a little box for you. In the main dashboard, we have Add Media, and over on the training wheels, we have um, a little picture, Add Media. Same concept, Add Media. So in either way that I'm at, here I can click to Add, Add Media. If I've already uploaded pictures, they will be shown in the media library. This is what I was saying earlier, that this is not that user-friendly, like classic web design where I can create folders. All my cupcakes will exist in a folder. All my uh, pies will exist in a folder. Basically, on the insert media, if I upload a picture, it's going to, for me, WordPress for me will create folders. The year, the month, and the day. And then it's going to add my pictures. So then I don't have a way to organize them into folders. The closest that I have is under media library, I can say, show me pictures only, show me audio only, and by date. That's how it organizes it. And I've got search. So if I upload, 
if I uploaded um, if I uploaded pictures with certain names and attributes and such, I can search here and it'll filter it for me. But that's the thing that's a bit uh, cumbersome about WordPress. It's got a lot of great things, but this is not one of them, unfortunately. Their image management system is not the best, especially if we're used to making our own folders and organization and such. <clears throat> but if I choose to add an image and then upload an image, This is what I'm saying from my notes. I've got an image that I've uploaded. All text. That's what you want to, to write. You want to write a simple sentence. This is not going to be a paragraph. This is one simple sentence that explains what the picture is about. This is for the search engines to see. More importantly, for for blind people to see, for blind people to understand what your picture's about, accessibility reasons, the search engines highly, highly, highly recommend that you add alt text to your pictures. And so think about it in these terms. Let's say this is a picture of a cookie. If I simply write cookie, that's a terrible alt text because I have many other cookies. What's the difference between this cookie picture and that cookie picture? If I wrote pecan cookie. That's better. But I can use the, the space here, pecan cookie bundle for sale. I'm explaining that picture a little bit more um, for the search engine and for people. People that need the alt text. To craft an alt text, think about it in this terms. In these terms. Let's say you're on the phone with someone. How would you describe that picture to them? They're not blind, but how would you describe that picture to them? They can't see it at the moment in one sentence. That's how your alt text should be. This caption and description. Um, caption will appear on screen. Alt text will not appear on screen for sighted users. Alt text will be visible or usable but by people with a screen reader. But if you want the text to be visible on screen, it's the caption. You can use the same thing. And then finally, description is not going to be used by the people that need alt text or the people that can do the caption. Description is internal. You, in your database of pictures, if you're trying to find your picture, and you give it a description here, and you search, these are the things that will show up when you search. This is for yourself. I'm putting the same thing because it's a good description. And I could say Halloween. There's a keyword, in a sense, that I added to my picture so that I can find it when I search inside of WordPress. No one will see that, except for myself when I search inside of WordPress all my hundred images. This particular image is called jellyfish.jpg. There's no way for me at the moment in WordPress to change the file name. There's no way. You have to upload it already named properly. So if you've uploaded a picture in WordPress called img 772589jpg, you cannot change it in WordPress. You have to edit it on your Mac or Windows before you upload it, upload it, and then WordPress will have that name. An image size. Over at Pixabay, they were showing images that were about 1280 pixels wide. I would say 12, 1280 pixels tall or wide is a good size to have a high quality picture that it's not so big that it takes a long time to download. I'm going to say 1200 pixels maximum dimension width or height. 
usually your pictures are in proportion so using your software you can resize it but the cool thing with WordPress is if you upload a big picture let's say 1900 I think that's a little large <clears throat> but if you upload a picture and then within this insert media you have the ability here to say display the full-sized picture a thumbnail of it a medium size and WordPress will automatically create that size for you the problem is you're going to have the original full-sized one saved on your site as well as the medium sized one so you'll have two copies of the picture now, that might not be so bad with if you've got 10 pictures on your site but if you've got a thousand pictures on your site and you've uploaded the large quality one but you're only using the medium quality one you're wasting space you're wasting resources on your website so it is a good idea to edit your site uh, edit your pictures to the appropriate size before you upload them and so a size of about 1280 is a good size in case you need a big version of it and a medium version and so forth it's better to start off a little larger than if you uploaded a 280 pixel sized image and then if you want to make that large it's going to degrade quality it's not a good idea to take a small picture and blow it up but it's okay to some degree to take a large picture and shrink it down so don't go from a small picture to a large picture headings I'm writing something let's say I have um, ingredients procedure notes and then within ingredients I have the ingredients and then in procedure I've got the procedure and then on notes I write something I have a question on the images. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it better to, if you upload one that's 1280, um, an image, is it better to just leave it at that and let WordPress size it down? Or if you know you're going to use a large on some and a very small image of the same thing, would it be better to upload two images, one large and one small? No, I would upload the large one, the 1280, because then WordPress can resize it to the size that I like. Okay. Um, it'll do it for me in that case. Um, so it's good. Yeah, you wouldn't go with the large. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't upload a 2,000 pixel size one okay. if I'm only going to be using 1,200 and 500. So I would use the 1,200 one, and it'll resize it to the 500 size. I want to divide up my document into these sections, ingredients, procedure, and notes. And you would say, okay, great, I'm going to select ingredients and make it red and make it bold. Stands out. But that's not right. I don't want to simply visually change the content. I want to mark the content with the correct element. If you don't see a second row of editing tools. If you only see one row like that, click on the last icon. Let's see on this one. Say uh, it's under here. So if you're on this interface, you can click the three dots, toggle advanced. You have more options. And then over on the dashboard interface, if you click on this option, toggle toolbar, Get more options. What I want to do is mark this text instead of a plain paragraph. I want to mark it as heading. These will make the text big and bold and important looking and impart meaning. Simply making it bold and red has no meaning. The meaning comes from using the proper tool for the proper task. So heading two heading 1, etc. I would recommend to avoid heading 1 because WordPress will automatically take your title and mark it as heading 1 on your screen. And 
if you've got a heading one, you don't need another heading one. These things have a hierarchy. Heading one is basically the name of your, of your post. It's the only thing that should be marked as heading one. It's automatic. So I recommend for any of these other ones, set them to heading two, for example. Ingredients is heading two. Procedure is heading two. And notes is heading two. You might say, well, why didn't I choose heading three? Because they have a hierarchy. They have a meaning. The higher numbers are a deeper level. Like on my, on my syllabus, um, on my PDF, this is, OK, the PDF. At the very top here, this is a heading one. It stands out. It's the biggest element on the screen because this whole page has this meaning. WordPress checklist, heading one. But then the main sections, heading two, heading two, heading two. All of these have a heading two. They are equally important within the content. Within then each sub-element, which in, within each heading I can have sub-elements. Social for them, social for you, comments, those could be heading three. So you have to think about it in terms of content inside of content. And so that's what I want to do. Unfortunately, with WordPress, you don't get a lot of ability to, I don't like that font, I don't like that color, I don't like that size. You don't get a lot of ability to edit that very easily. Um, so at the very least, you're going to set your, your elements as headings. Use use uh, headings, use tags, use categories, add links, read more, etc. You're just about out of time. But I want you to then explore your WordPress interface, especially if you created a testing site like, like I did here. This is, this is a real site. It's on the real internet, yes, but it doesn't matter. I made it up. I put in fake names and all of that. And if I choose to publish it or preview it, it doesn't quite matter. So I'm going to go in here and explore. What does this button do? And what does that do? And, and um, learn from it and such. Yes. On here, you do add media. Let's see. Let's say I want to use this image right here. It's under that little pencil. They, they hid it. But let's say you're adding media. You want to use this picture. You click on the pencil. So your pencil appears on the picture. You click on the pencil, and then it pops up here. Caption, alt text, description. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, if you want to delete these things, I mean, delete the WordPress.com site. That is found under um, where did they put it? I believe it's under. Right there. Okay. It's under delete site of tools. What you have to do is it's kind of hidden, but if you're on the if you're on the main my site interface like this, uh, it looks like you do have to go over to settings. Delete site. Under settings, if you're on this interface, you go to settings, delete site. Everything will be deleted. Start over. It will delete everything, but still keep your address. This is under settings here. If you're in the dashboard interface, right here, you're going to go under tools, delete site. So that's why there's no negative to creating some fake temporary sites here. You can then delete it. How can I change my main to create another site? You can create another one up at the top somewhere, switch site, manage site, uh, right here, add new WordPress site. You have to be in the main WordPress.com screen, and then you're going to see my sites, add new WordPress.
Yes. We were taking over a WordPress site, and so none of the pictures have the correct alt text. Um, they don't have the picture names were all very generic, you know, description. Would it be worthwhile to change those, just go through and one by one update them, or just leave it and go from there? It depends on your time. I would recommend that you do go back and fix the old ones. Uh, but if your time is limited, I would go from here on out. Perhaps, though, at least back up to the to maybe the last two blog posts, which still show up on the main screen. Maybe the ones that were written a year ago are back on page 7. So if you maybe deal with the ones on page 1, at least, and then from then go on. And then when you have time, all the time that we have... Yes. Uh, and in photos, is there a way of downloading the photos if you wanted to say you wanted to rename them and you don't like the name? Can you download the photos rather than just right click on them in the screen? That's the best way. Uh, I don't think they have a, a way to download it. Let me confirm it. Unless they changed it. Let's see. <coughs> that. View attachment. <coughs> Edit image, view attachment page. Yeah, they don't make it that easy for you to download your picture back again. You do have to right click it, okay, save, save image. Yeah. Yes. If you are linking to someone else's site with their URL, there could be that downside in that if they remove their picture from that URL, then it removes it from your site. Well, you know what I mean? What if I use it off my website, like my blog, my regular website, mm -hmm. and take an image from that and use it with the URL to my mm -hmm. blog? On that, I don't. On that, there's no. I don't believe there's any issue. It's just the issue about if you're linking to someone else's picture. If it's your own picture, you have control of it. You have command of it. So there shouldn't be any problem, even if it's on different domains and such. I don't believe so. So, if uh, if this was a longer class, we would be able to talk more. But unfortunately, they stopped paying me two minutes ago. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to wrap up at this point. Uh, I'm going to put that document into the network folder right now. We're going to wrap up the class and um, hopefully see you in a future class. Can you just show me the